Welcome back to Yoko and Frisky's Dimensional Rift! We've all been tucked inside of our homes because Santa Claus decided that he didn't want to participate and splattered all of his little elves across America, making everyone sick and scared. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm doing great. I am here in my home. It's Memorial Day weekend, and it's raining. <laughs> it rained for me yesterday. Yeah, it's my day off, but tomorrow's going to be nice, and I have to go to work. What have you been doing during this quarantine? My getting a new job. What? <laughs> yeah, I I did not want to have to go back and clean all the time, and yeah, so I met off off in a better place. I'm s- working from home. Yeah, I'm so proud of you. Mm-hmm. You've evolved so much. I've evolved finally into a Charizard like I've always wanted, but I really like Blastoise better, so I'm going to evolve into that now. Yeah, Blastoise. Yeah, I've been uh, playing some old games. Uh, my friend lent me his uh, copy of Bioshock. Ooh. So I've been playing that. It's pretty depressing. <laughs> but man, it, it was like ahead of its time. It was, it's a really pretty game. Was well, what is it? Well, a acc- acclaim, well received. Yeah, well received, clinically, critically acclaimed, because um, it just gives you a lot of options to kill people. Man, you can shoot them with guns. You can use superpowers, like the X Men, or you can uh, you can like hit them with a wrench. <laughs> you can hit them with a wrench. You can hawk little turrets, and they'll follow you around. And they'll shoot them for you, and or you can hypnotize the 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 brutes, or you know the evil people. You can hypnotize them, get them to fight each other. It's a lot of options for an original IP. That sounds wholesome. Fun for the whole family, but uh, I like the look of the underwater city of Rapture. It's really pretty. It reminds me of Batman Returns. Batman returning. <laughs> Batman Returns, Batman Returning. Batman Phone Home. Man. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. And then I played Part 2, and Part 2 is pretty much, like, more of the same. But you're not as impressed. It doesn't sound like, like, it sounded to me that you were like, eh, you know. Yeah, because they really blew their load with the first one. Because in Part 2, it's just, there's, <sighs> there's, there's not a lot that's new to it like they, they fix the hacking you're not doing that little pipe game anymore mm-hmm. you're actually uh you have a little needle and you have to like hit the green zones and they have mm-hmm. a hacking gun so it's like if you don't want to deal with the hacking you just shoot the thing you want to hack and they also have a um, what else they have the ability to control big daddies like if you level up the hypnosis plasmid boom big daddies are on your side that's all I'd be doing. I'd be like, uh, uh, Big Daddy, here, you're under my control now. <laughs> yeah, but you don't get that power up until, like, the end of the game. <laughs> oh, well, gross. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I'm currently playing through the DLC now, and it's basically just, like, two extra levels, and you're doing the same shit. Mm-hmm. Um, you're a Big Daddy, and you have to, like, save the little sisters, and then you have to wait for them to, like, get the red stuff from the dead bodies and then you're protecting against hordes of enemies and it's just really repetitive and tedious i felt that way about the assassin's creed See, after the first one it's the first one it got like steamy and then when odyssey came out i was like oh i feel they really tried they tried but did they succeed because there was a woman in it. Hey! <laughs> I could care less. Speaking of woman, what what's the deal with Batwoman? What's going on? 
why does she want to do Batwoman anymore? What's going on? I don't know. I actually, there was like a video. I mean, it was like, here's the real reason why um, Ruby Rose was not gay enough for this part. Click here below. And I'm like, don't tempt me. <laughs> don't tempt me. What am I doing? You know? I hear um, she almost got like really hurt badly. Like she almost got paralyzed and she had to go for yep. a surgery. But what yep. is she doing her own stunts for? Because the CW broke. <laughs> CW. You know? And who, who who was on set for that to happen, really? I know... I know that um, she had the choice to do it or not, but still, if you're... The company should have just really had her back on personal injuries. Did you know that um, Uma Thurman was pressured by... Um, What's his name? The which director? Quentin Tarantino to in Kill Bill to do that car crash, and it she's never been the same since. So like, don't do your own stunts, kids. Well, Quentin Tarantino is is weird. He has a foot fetish, so you shouldn't listen to anything Quentin Tarantino tells you. Because then, next thing you know, you gotta have your you gotta have your shoes off. You're going to be sticking it into his face, and it's going to be gross. It's like that one guy from Nickelodeon who did all the Amanda Bynes shows and Drake and Josh. He, had, he was obsessed with feet. I'm not wrong. I'm sorry. You made me sad. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Oh. One thing that you and I did was beat Streets of Rage 4. Streets of Rage 4. What's your review of Streets of Rage 4? I love this game. It's it's very comforting to me because when I was a little pupper, uh, my little cousins would come over and we would play Streets of Rage 2 because that was the only one that we had. And we'd play it over and over and over again. And I would always die after the second level. I was like five years old, so, you know, expect that. My cousins were like eight and ten. And my brother was, like, the only teenager, and, like, uh, I felt that it was challenging on normal, just like the original, and then I tried Mania on my own, and it was just like, wow, I have to beat this, I have too much pride, <laughs> but it, it, I loved it, it's, 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 it's a fun game. What about you? What did you feel? Um, yeah, I felt like I was transported back to the 90s, I had my little, you know, my fanny pack on, I had my my zebra printed pants, I had my white cup with the, the purple and the green lines, you know. It was like old school beat 'em up. Like I used to play Final Fight on the Super Nintendo as a kid. And that game didn't have co op because Nintendo's cheap. But this I don't game, know why like, they didn't. It would have been perfect. You have to, you have <clears throat> enough characters in the in Final Fight, because I love Final Fight and you don't. They're like, no, deal with it. No. Yeah, I, I never beat, like, this. I only got to, like, maybe the third level because I would always play by myself and I'll get my ass kicked. But at least this game, you know, they have a lot of cool characters, uh, different environments. The music is a treat. De mm -hmm. Definitely a throwback to the old school days. And it's fun because it has online co-op for the first time. And did you know, if you play it, on the system, you can play four players. Oh, really? Yeah, it's local play. Four players. So, huh. and then the more you play, the more points you get, and the more you unlock. That's how fighting games should be. It should reward you for the amount of time you play, and that's a perfect system. Yeah, versus oh, you bought this game, you spent the money, we only have like six levels. Too bad. Yeah, and it's it's very challenging too. Like we got our yeah. ass kicked quite a quite a bunch of times, but we came through. We beat it. We didn't take no assists because we ain't pussies. No, <laughs> we, we didn't. <laughs> we have too much pride. Yeah. I was just we beat it with no. three lives only, and we got to the end. Yeah. We beat those weird siblings. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And it was... Yeah, weird. That sibling thing is like, wow. I feel like we're playing a movie now. Like, what what movie had? Siblings Rampage. That's right. <laughs> oh, those two were brothers and sister? I thought that that's what they said. 
I don't know. Because I, I, I had the phone was like, my sister's gone crazy. My sister's gone crazy. I don't know. I honestly wasn't paying attention that much. <laughs> I, I really wasn't either. Because we were watching, we were watching Rampage, and uh, my my shelving unit collapsed, and I was like, oh no! <laughs> and you guys were like, what's happening? Yeah, it sounded like you were in the middle of an earthquake. I was very concerned. I'm like, Jet, Jet, Jet. Oh my gosh! Now my room's a mess. I, I like, I keep my room as clean as I possibly can, and then whoop dee dee, <laughs> it collapsed. Priceless. So mad. Oh, you also saw uh, the new Scooby Doo movie. How was that monstrosity? Uh... Have you ever eaten something at McDonald's and you're like, you were excited for it because it was like, the rib wedge. <laughs> and then you take a bite out of the rib wedge and you're like, huh. Do you mean, my... do you mean the McRib? Oh, sorry. I'm thinking of the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> the rib wedge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the McRib, whatever. <laughs> the rib wedge. <laughs> it's a rib sandwich. What, what was what is, what is, is that what it's called? I don't know. We just call it the McRib. Oh. I, I'm, I'm calling it the Rib Witch, okay? Just, so, like, Scooby-Doo was like the Rib Witch. Just not as good as people think it is. It's very generic. Um, you know what? So here's... Here, I'm just gonna give the Scooby-Doo movie without any spoilers, okay? Hold on. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> and if it's spoiled, don't... Tough. It's really not worth watching, because... It's about the team. It's about Scooby being alone. Not Scooby. Shaggy being a loner. He meets Scooby. Yay! And then... Daphne, Velma, Freddy were just there. They were just there. They had nothing to do with the plot. They had nothing to do with the story. They were just there. They were furniture. Yeah, and for some reason, Simon Cowell was in the film. This isn't Shrek. Who Ugh. cares? Stupid. It was stupid. And then, you know, I, I just... Scooby and Shaggy were in a fight throughout, like, near the end of the movie, and then they made up, and that was it. That was Scoop. That was it. Shocking. Go, go, go team. Yeah, I mean, I look like it didn't. Uh, I didn't miss much there. It seemed like uh, when they were putting it out straight to VOD, I figured, well, they probably don't have a lot of faith in this anyway. Plus, the mm-hmm. Trolls movie made so much money on VOD to the Which point. Which movie? The Trolls World Tour. Oh yeah, but I heard Trolls was good, and I I have yet to visit the Trolls World, and I am not gonna. Vi- There's so much glitter in the Trolls World. Have you ever have you ever had glitter in your butt crack before? Uh, not since that one con. Exactly. You know what and I'm talking about. And we never want glitter in our butt cracks since that one con again. You heard it here, folks. An exclusive. <laughs> DJ exclusive! But yeah. I bought a pack of cookies and I want to make them. Make those cookies, girl. But yeah, that's why we haven't been around. You know, there hasn't been a lot coming out in terms of games and movies, but... We did have a bad movie night last week, and it was a controversial subject. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. It was a (sighs) controversial subject. What movie was so (laughs) controversial? We watched Super Mario Brothers, the movie, and uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Nobody really said anything about Mortal Kombat Annihilation because that's that movie's indefensible. But there was a few people on Twitter that were like calling me an idiot and saying, "Oh man, this is the stupidest take of all time." You saying Super Mario Brothers is a bad movie? I'm like, bitch. Excuse me. <laughs> that's what they. And it was just two people, but they were really trying to push their point, and I was just like, "It's okay if you're sad." One day you'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, you were trolling the shit out of them, which was funny. 
And oh, I yes, showed. I was, like, I was like, dude, if you're not happy, then you know, go someplace else without hurting anybody. But I said it in a way that was just like, oh, sweetie, you're sad. Yeah, I That's showed. Okay. I showed him the Rotten Tomato score. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, and he was like, Rotten Tomato score? What What a weak way to defend yourself. It is so weak. You know what else is weak? This coffee. Just like you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know, I know, I was, I'm aware that people like this movie, but I just never seen it, like, defended to this, to this extreme where it's like, you put Bad Movie Night and Super Mario Brothers in the same sentence, you're gonna get, like, angry mentions and I was like, this, okay, like, people, some people really love this movie, and I understand, I used to watch it as a child on HBO, because they used to show it all, every day, all day, and I was like, yeah, this is entertaining, but as a Super Mario Brothers movie, it fucking sucks, I'm sorry, hot take mm. or not, it's a bad adaptation of the source material, mm-hmm. you got mm-hmm. Yoshi, Yoshi's there for pure fan service. Yoshi doesn't do anything, but, like, I think he gets stabbed for some reason. He did. He got stabbed, and then he he, he tries eating um, Wilma from the Flintstones. Yeah, Wilma from the Flintstones is there. Nobody knows why. And then you got Toad. He's, like, a, a bootleg, like, singer on the street. I, call, oh, he, I called him Ed Sheeran. Like, he's a bootleg Ed Sheeran. <laughs> He's singing on the corner for, for for coins, and then he turns he gets turned into a goomba. The goombas are nightmare fuel. They yeah, were, they are. Like I don't I don't know what they were going for. I, I saw a video a long time ago about the making of this movie, and they had like a really cool vision originally. It was gonna be like an adventure type movie. It was gonna be like a Wizard of Oz where they're going into this like this strange world, you know, the Mushroom Kingdom. But then I think once the directors came on board, they just like threw all that cool stuff out, and we got uh-huh. stuck with the movie we have today. And it's, I'm, like, <laughs> I, I'm like, I agree, I agree with you. It's I'm just gonna agree with you. Yeah, it's bizarre. So as an adaptation, it just doesn't work. Mario and Luigi, they they don't look like brothers at all. They have the same last name. It's Mario, Mario, Luigi, Mario. So they could be called the Mario Brothers. <laughs> well, they're technically not brothers. Luigi was adopted by John Leguizamo's spirit. And, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, and then the guy from Roger Rabbit was just there. Bob Hoskins said uh, he, this is the worst movie he ever made. And he would get drunk on set. In between takes. Oh, man. And, yo, this movie is so bad, it predicted 9-11. Damn. It did. <laughs> it did. Why do all bad, like, why do all, like, controversial things predict stuff? It's just a thing. Yo, but the Twin Towers get roasted in one yeah, they scene. Do. They it, it looks terrible. They do. It's It's really... Yeah, that happened. So I'm saying, like, but if you... Let's say you never played Super Mario Brothers. You don't know anything about the games. And you watch this movie. And mm-hmm. you might think it's it's pretty entertaining. You know, I wouldn't blame you for that. As a standalone, like, if it was an original movie, a property, yeah. You know, you, it was a fun time. We were roasting it. You were oh, kinda, yeah, we it were, was a great roast. That's the thing. The Mario movie was entertaining. It, it it the problem is I think I think adults were expecting more versus kids. Kids when I was a kid and I saw it, I enjoyed the movie because it was fun, not because it was like exactly like Mario. But I was I will admit I was disappointed because I was like, where's well, how come Bowser looks like that? Like, the cartoon has him like a, a dragon, and the video game has him like a dragon. Like, why, where's the dragon? Why does Bowser look like Donald Trump? <laughs> he looks like Donald Trump and, um, who else? What's another millionaire? Well, Ross Perot. Pretty much the Senate all together. <laughs> and, uh, with cornrows. Yeah, he had some weird 
albino cornrows going on. Yeah, it was, it was just, it was, like, and he was a germaphobe, and I was like, wow, the Super Mario movie predicted the future in a different way. Yeah, it was so weird. The only accurate thing to the game, like, almost accurate, was the ba And even they messed that up, because the ba had a Reebok sign under its foot. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> like, why the hell was the ba have a Reebok sponsorship? Uh-huh. Probably because there, there could have been a Reebok... Um... Let me check. Hold on. <laughs> Fact check. Reebok. Fact check. Anyway, they had Princess Daisy instead of Princess Peach. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't know why they went with that. It's it's bizarre because Mario does have a love interest in this movie, but it's some random chick from like Queens. It <laughs> might as well have been like a Ninja Turtle spinoff. He had two love interests. It was like a a, a big black lady who was beautiful. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Like, she was big and beautiful. And when I mean big, she was just tall, and she looked like a singer. She you looked, know what I mean? She looked like Lizzo. <laughs> yeah! But, like, if Lizzo, if it was Lizzo's mom. Yeah, Lizzo's mom. Tonight, yeah, and then she, she was making out with Mario, and I was like, yo, Mario, you gonna tell your girlfriend what you did <laughs> down in the store? You gonna, you gonna yeah. tell her about that? Because, like, and these aren't humans. The problem was... You couldn't understand if the people underground were lizard people or if they were just humans because they were implying that the humans that you were seeing were not 100% human, yet they looked human until they got turned in. Some of them got turned into dinosaurs. It was weird. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are weird in this movie. You know, the, the whole fungus thing. Um, Princess Daisy's dad being a giant like Q-tip <laughs> covered in wax. <laughs> it 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 looked like yeah. um. It looked like a lot of things we don't want to say. <laughs> yeah, there was a little graphic, but I, I'm not gonna lie. The coolest thing that I've always wanted was this, the Mario Brothers shoes, and apparently some guy sells them. Oh, the ones that make you fly or jump really high. Yeah, the, the jump shoes. Some guy makes. These, his name is Tom Spina Designs. They're Super Mario movie prop restoration. So, like, he he restored a, a set of those boots. But I guess you can he can make you a pair, too. No, like, the aesthetic of the movie is probably the coolest thing. It's, it's a weird dystopian Manhattan. Underground. Yeah, and uh, the outfits are cool. You know, the, the cars look dope the weapons like the aesthetic is great it just doesn't look like super mario at all yeah (laughs) if it didn't have mario attached to the brand you could have had it like what is it undergrounders or something like that like called the plumbers (laughs) yeah the plumbers and then people would have been like wow this would have been a great super mario movie because you know that shit (laughs) they would have said that shit Oh, uh, Jesus. They had like bulk and, they had like a bulk and skull type follow Mario and Luigi around. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was like verbatim bulk and skull. And they look like the two guys from A Night at the Roxbury. <laughs> yeah, one has a mullet and the other one doesn't. And every time they come on screen I just be start singing, What is love? Baby don't hurt me. And then they were stupid and then they were smart. Yeah, and it didn't change anything at all mm-hmm. in the plot at all. Yup. Yeah, this movie is this movie is just weird, man. And we were seeing it with a few people who've never seen it before. And it was just so funny, like see their reactions. Like, is that Yoshi? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, and one of them was like, I was like, eh, that's Staten Island. And, it, and one of one of our friends, Big Z, was like, How dare you call it Staten Island? Cause you're right. And I was like, Dang. <laughs> Because oh, yeah. it looks like trash. Sorry, Staten Islanders. It's just the truth. It does. I'm actually... I told you this before. There's this girl I'm talking to. And she's like, I want to go to Staten Island. I'm like, girl, people usually want to run away from Staten Island. <laughs> yeah. You want yeah. to get far, far away. Far, far away. But yeah, I can see why people 
genuinely enjoy it. But, you know, um, we're supposedly getting a Mario movie with the Illumination. See uh-huh. how that goes. I mean, their track record is kind of iffy. I mean, I like Sing. Uh-huh. That's about it. I mean, I think The Despicable Me, I think I saw the first one. It was Despicable all right. Despicable Me was fine. Yeah, but their Minions movies, no. <laughs> no. Uh, the Minion movie is, no. is it's only good if you're, like, really, like, oh, I gotta leave something on for my dog. <laughs> so... There's that. But yeah. Um, then Mortal Kombat came on, and I just couldn't. I couldn't. It was... I <laughs> fell asleep. You fell asleep. Yeah, you did. And then the whole stream was wonky. And it was... It, yeah, it was we, chaos. Yeah, we all had to, like, switch off and on. Like, I think, I think the fates were like, no, Mario's the only movie you're going to get tonight. Yeah, so Mar- Super Mario Brothers was the first, you know, live action video game movie, and it and it started what we like to call the video game curse, or the video game movie mm-hmm. curse, because a lot of these films just don't live up to the the games they're based on, and you know we're gonna I just want to go through a few of these, you know, and then talk about like why it didn't work. Mm-hmm. Well, first we got. Double Dragon came out after. I never actually oh seen God. that one. Have you seen that one? I I saw it when I was really little, and it followed up with a cartoon. Was it good? I didn't. <laughs> it was forgettable. <laughs> All right. It only made like I'm looking at a list now. It only made two million dollars. <laughs> Whoa! Yikes, Amundo. Rotten Tomato score eight <laughs> percent. And then after that was your favorite one. It was actually a month later. Street Fighter. Oh my gosh. And I fell asleep t- watching that too. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have the, the Street Fighter the movie, the game. Like, I got it from the video game store I used to work at once upon a time ago. And, um... Oof, it's bad. It's just bad. Street Fighter the movie, the game? Yes. Oh yeah, I played at the barcade. It's a, it's a ripoff of Mortal Kombat. They have yes, it is. They have human, not nearly as good of a move or control. Human actors, you know, are portraying the sprites. It's just bad. And then the Street Fighter movie. At least what they got right with the Street Fighter movie is they got basically like all the characters from Street Fighter Two, and they look like them at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. John Claude Van Damme is hilarious as Guile. He has a bunch of one liners. So does. And Bison. I think he's, he was trying to be um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it was just, <laughs> it was such a confusing, I felt conflict. I was like, are you trying to be Arnold right now? Or are you trying to be Guile? Or are you just being a mix of yourself? This is a man who loves showing off his body, by the way. Yeah, you know, he was just a very machismo presence. I mean, he was just basically the star of the movie. Besides Raul Julia, mm-hmm. but that that made actually a lot of money. It made a hundred million at the box. Well, it's because I I saw it when it first came out in theaters. I was really little and I loved it, and people thought it was a good movie. But like, I it's it's so hard to watch. It is. It's it's a struggle. It's a little boring. Like, yeah. and the fights aren't that great. But after a year later, we actually got. From what I, I think is a decent video game movie, the first Mortal Kombat. Which I, I was... you know what I don't remember it, but you don't but remember like it? Watch... No, I don't remember it. Wow. But I'd like to watch it. Damn, son, we might have to watch it after this episode. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because it's actually it has a good story. You know, it's simple. It's about a fighting tournament, so it's pretty simple. Most of the characters are there. The only the biggest problem with this flick is it's rated PG thirteen. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still decent for what they did, but Mortal Kombat was known for the violence and the fatalities, and to just cut that out is basically cutting out a big part of you know what makes Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat. Well, 
okay, so my problem with Annihilation was it felt like the money that they spent on it was just so cheap. Well, like, yeah, yeah, Annihilation's the second one, and that's where it all fell apart because... Uh, yeah, because mm-hmm. I don't remember the first movie. I know I saw it, but I remember it having better special effects than the second one. Yeah, the, the first movie was focused. It had a, a good script, and... Um, the third one, I mean the second one, they the, the director didn't come back. Like ninety percent of the actors didn't come back. The only people that came back were uh, Katana and Liu Kang, mm-hmm. because everybody hated the script because they, they knew it was terrible. And it uh, is like I was watching it and I'm like, I don't know what the fucking story is, and everybody else was confused too. Wow. And then you missed it, but at the end, it's like a huge. CGI battle between a dragon and like some other monster and that that's the money shot of this movie. <laughs> it's just awful awful CGI. <laughs> Sounds me. like the time when I went to see Harry Potter in 3D and there was only one part that was 3D and that was the end. Oh, you know what? I'm actually going to look it up so you can watch it. <laughs> yes. The CGI fight. Uh but the saving grace of the second Mortal Kombat is the freaking soundtrack, man. The Dude, that soundtrack is fire, okay? Who cares about the movie? That soundtrack was phenomenal, okay? Yeah, it, it was... Uh, it's just a joy. It's a joy. I'm looking for the fight. Basically, they both do their animalities. They change, and it's so bad. The final fight, part one. But yeah, oh, first um, Mortal Kombat is good. Go ahead. What's the other? What's the other movie that you were talking about? The other live action extravaganzers. Uh, Video game movies oh, back then. Oh yeah, I have like a whole list. We keep talking while I look it up. Uh, after Mortal Kombat came Wing Commander. Oh. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I've never played the game. It has Freddie Prince Jr. in it. That's I've a... played Wing Commander before, though. Uh, well, what's the game about? Shooting. <laughs> shooting an things. Shooting things. Got it. Like, seriously, it was shooting things in an airplane. And my brother rented it. My brother rented a lot of games and anytime i wanted to rent a game i couldn't because we it was like this only one of you can rent a game and only one of you can rent a movie and then we'd have to switch and i would always want to rent the um the mascot video games and then i would get told they suck they suck they suck stop renting them they're stupid and like to a certain extent that was true but like i was a kid like, I, I wanted to play something that was like Sonic or something better, you know? And uh, it never happened. I'm sorry. You're and bro- then I beat my first video game, Samurai Showdown. I'll never forget beating that game. It was like, I was, I think it was six years old. It was like the highlight of my life. Okay, I found the video. It's in the chat. <laughs> okay, you want me to watch it live? Yeah, watch it live. I'm running. I'm running. I'm gonna watch it live. Okay. All right. Isn't it beautiful? You will fail. <laughs> the real adventures of Johnny Quest had better graphics. I like that series. I do too. Oh. Oh. oh, and a furry was born. And they're going full animorphs. A scaly was born, more like it. What are you watch? Describe what you're feeling right now watching this. My mouth is open. <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I watching? It's the final fight between uh, Luke Kang and Shao Kahn, and they both morphed into their animal forms. Does this happen in the game? I don't remember this happening in the game. You can perform animalities in the game. 
but they look better than this. But that's the I best. I feel like I'm watching a TV show and not a movie. Well, yeah, but that's. Oh, the... oh remember Mortal Kombat, the live action TV show? Yeah. Let's not. I loved it. <laughs> Let's not. So what good. is going on? I feel like I'm not even watching a good Godzilla film. I feel like I'm watching a fan fiction. So, so guess the Rotten Tomatoes score for Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Sixty-four. No. Guess. Was I right? It's two. <laughs> Dang, wow. <laughs> it's too, I got to do, do my math over. But crazy enough, it's not the lowest score on this list. <laughs> wow. What comes oh, next? Shit. All right. After Wing Commander, t- your favorite, Lara Croft Tomb Raider. I enjoyed that movie. Yeah, I remember enjoying it. I just don't remember anything from it except i remember there was a giant robot and there was a basement jacks where's your head at playing at the end <laughs> yeah i had the soundtrack <laughs> actually I, I, <laughs> and then you get to type in the nude code <laughs> and then she explodes yeah but this was like the f- the first like big video game movie because it had star power it had angelina jolie playing laura Mm-hmm. And it made big bank. It made two hundred and seventy four million at the box office. But then I heard mixed reviews of people not liking it. And now that people are older, they love that movie. So Listen, I did, I didn't grow up on the Tomb Raider game, so I can't say for sure. I, I did, mm-hmm. and because again, because my brother had all the like we would share. That's one thing. Even though like we're we we fight a lot the. The, the thing that we did was we shared our games. We never fought over games, ever. I don't know why, but we didn't. <laughs> so we, he would rent Tomb Raider or borrow it from a friend. And I spent more time in t- Laura Croft's house doing gymnastics. Yo, me too. I, that was fun. It was fun. Like, if it sounds silly, but if that was the game, that'd be fine. But the creepy butler would follow you everywhere, and I didn't like that. I locked him in the freezer. <laughs> can you do that? Yeah, you can. Wow, you're terrible. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I remember enjoying that movie when it came out. The second one, I can't remember either. Oh, the only thing I remember from the second one, she punches a shark in the face. Yeah. That was like the trailer moment. And then she has a relationship with a guy in the second one. I don't know. I was like, why? She always has a relationship with a guy. You're like, oh, well, you're a woman. Let's get it's the going. 90s. Oh, well, early 2000s. Okay, so I'm going to say 80s until, I guess, 2010. <laughs> that, That's a long time. That women were free to not be chained down to men? No, it was more like the, the, the male protagonist always had to go over for a female protagonist and vice versa. That's just the formula. That's just movie formula. I'm not excusing it. It's just a pattern. That's just how it is. And then recently, less... I'm not going to say less. I'm just going to say the plot is more diverse. It's not a, a set formula where a guy meets girl, guy falls in love with girl, or guy has to save girl, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could be because of the Me Too movement, but who knows? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no! The agenda people! You can't say anything! The agenda people. And then we got, which is, um, weirdly enough, the, like, the most profitable and successful. We got what? This is the most profitable and successful video game movie franchise of all time. It's the Resident Evil series. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> it's it's such a cheesy series. It's ridiculous. Like, let's get into it. The first one, first one from what I can remember, it's not bad. It's just like a typical zombie movie. But if you play the games, like when I first saw these movies, like I would say the first three, 
Mm -hmm. I've never played a Resident Evil at that point. So I'm like watching these movies as an outsider. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, these are action movies. I don't know better. But now, having played the whole series and um, watching these movies again, Resident Evil, man, like, they really dropped the ball on it. Like, because it's it's such a simple story. It's just people go to a mansion and they fight zombies, you know, and they uncover, like, secrets. But in, in the movie, they just go straight to, like, the laboratory. They don't have any of the characters from the game in it. They ha- they make up a new character named Alice, which the fans mm-hmm. hate. <laughs> Every- okay, first first and foremost, <laughs> if there is a little girl wearing a nightgown, they're always evil, A. And B, no, they scary, okay? Or any little child that's British that's super pale that's in a house no okay i think we can all agree doesn't matter what size shape color or race you are any little child okay in a house (laughs) or an industrial building that is a ghost or a poltergeist is effing scary okay no just saying any british little girl is scary you're all going to die down here. I was like, nope, turn it. Um, I got <laughs> But it it had some cool action scenes. They had the the laser room, which became like one of the iconic scenes from that franchise. Oh, I hated that. I hated it. It 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 it. it you know, go ahead. The only Resident Evil thing it had was umbrella, zombies, and they had a liquor and the zombie dogs. That's it. That's mm-hmm. all you get in from the, the game, which sucks because. George A. Romero, who's known for you know the classic zombie movies at the, the time, he was going to do the movie, and it was going to have Jill and Chris in it, and it was going to be in the mansion, but, you know, I guess, I forgot, I think it was the studio or Capcom, somebody said, no, we don't want this movie, and they hired Paul W.S. Anderson, who decided to put his wife in all the movies and make her a superstar, and that's how we got stuck with the series we got today. Oh, <laughs> but it's such a like, okay, I felt, honest to goodness, I felt like the first Resident Evil movie was the scariest, and then the rest were just neutered. They were just dramatic action films with blood. Oh, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna go through them briefly. The second one is probably the closest one you're going to get to the games, because mm-hmm. it has Nemesis in it, and has Jill Valentine, but whenever she tries to do something cool, she just gets upstaged by Alice immediately after. So she's basically just wallpaper. Oh, that, yeah, that hurt my that, that hurt my feelings. And she's said. she's wearing the outfit from Resident Evil Three and everything, so she's mm-hmm. complete fan service for the sake of it. And she, yeah, she doesn't get to do anything cool because Alice does all the cool stuff. Alice gets in a fist fight with Nemesis, dude. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. She fights Nemesis with her fists. And then, um, Which, by the end of the uh, movie, Alice gets, like, superpowers. <laughs> Which one? Oh, you're right. Yeah, by the Which end one? of the... Which one? Which one was the one where they're fighting in the bathroom and... Oh, that's What's the fourth that? That's the fourth one. Okay, the fourth one. Okay, sometimes they all just blend together. Because, I mean, there's zombies in it, right? <laughs> Barely. Like, they get, like, pushed to the side as the series goes on. The third movie completely goes off the rails because it's the there's five years later and the whole world has turned into a desert and the whole yeah world, yeah they yeah, completely, I remember that's that when way. they said fuck the games we're not going to follow them at all even though they keep throwing in random characters from the games because claire is in the third movie <laughs> like it's just I, a girl I, baby I have... claire <laughs> claire claire why baby girl we love you she she has like they just put her in there, but she doesn't act like Claire at all. Carlos is in the third one too, but he doesn't look anything like him. Doesn't talk like him. It's just names for the fans. Like, hey, we're kind of listening to you. We're just gonna put this guy in here and that guy. And uh, she fights a tyrant in that movie. Uh, and she has telekinesis. <laughs> she uses telekinesis, but it gives her like migraines, so she can't use it. All, can't use it all the oh, time. Oh no! The typical I'm a telekinetic, and my nose bleeds and my head hurts. And then the fourth one is what you're talking about in the bathroom, where they copied a bunch of stuff from Resident Evil Five. Wasn't it in color? 
I mean, not in color. 3D. (laughs) (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) I hope it was in color. Yeah, Yeah, that happened. All right, go ahead. Next one. So, yeah, they copied a bunch of stuff from Resident Evil 5 in that one. They had the Executioners. They had some of the Las Plagas people. They had Chris Redfield in it. Doesn't look anything like Chris. Oh, they had Chris and Claire in that one. And guess what? Claire has amnesia. So the fact that her brother's in the movie doesn't matter. Wow. Classic amniotic fluid. But I will say this. Starting with the fourth one, the action really gets good. Like, if you watch these movies as pure action movies, they're okay. They're not bad. Like, as a... Like, they fight Wesker at the end of this film, and it's straight out of, like, a scene from Resident Evil 5. Like, Wesker's doing, like, flips and teleporting, and it looks freaking hilarious (laughs) because he throws his glasses, and Chris Uh catches them, and then Wesker just, like, kicks them. (laughs) And then Alice Alice shows up with shotguns, and she's shooting quarters at him. (laughs) It's, oh, God, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous! I gotta show you. Do, do, I gotta do, show do, you. Do, do, do. Yeah, and then and that music comes on, and they're just fighting. You know, fighting. Everyone's fighting. Yeah, so there's some good action scenes in that, and the music is good too. Like that's when I started to turn around on these movies. I'm like, uh, you know, there's some good stuff in here. Uh, I would put the fight in the chat if you want to see it. And then the fifth one, uh, Resident Evil Retribution, is like a fan mm-hmm. fiction. Because this, this series has bonkers continuity. They're always changing shit. They're always retconning stuff. And they just start... They basically bring back people from the dead via clones. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> What's her name? Rodriguez? Yeah, Michelle back. Rodriguez comes back from the first one. But she never... Okay, Michelle Rodriguez's <laughs> only role in every movie is to die and then come back. She comes back twice because she's playing like a regular like citizen and she's playing like the the, the mercenary she was in the first one she's mm-hmm. she has two roles in this movie and then as a mercenary she takes the lost plagas parasite because they're like oh i guess we're gonna do lost plagas now and she gets like super strength and she beats the shit out of leon kennedy <laughs> this this movie is wow. a fan fiction because they have like a bunch of characters from the games but it, none of it makes sense like ada's there Leon, Barry, Jill comes back, but now she's evil. <laughs> she she got the mind control of the device from the Resident Evil Five. It's like they just plop a bunch of random shit from the series, and we're like, we're gonna put it in this movie. <laughs> it's oh insane, gosh. and every action scene's in slow motion. This is the one that feels like an actual video game because they're actually in this giant umbrella facility, and they have like these little cities where they're like test areas they have like tokyo berlin Uh new Uh york so they have to go through all the levels to get out and it's like a video game it's so cute (laughs) Uh how comforting oh my god and the fight scene between um alice and jill at the end is really good like i actually like resident evil retribution i actually own it that's how much i like it oh your favorite yeah, that's the fun one. Yep. And then the what? last one, the final chapter, mm-hmm. just shits to bed completely. <laughs> Which one? The, the final what was one. It in? It's called the final chapter. Oh, I didn't even know. I was like, are they up to seven Final Fantasies? No, the, the last I mean, one is so Resident bad. Evils? I don't know anymore. They're, they, they're just so many. Yeah, the last one is just so bad, because all of a sudden, there's a cure for the virus, but everybody on Earth is dead, so who cares? And then the the editing is terrible. Like, before, the action scenes were, like, the best part of these movies, but now they're the worst part, because the editing is so choppy. Like, a fight, like, one punch would be, like, five edits. It would be, like, cut, 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 cut. I watched it with Kaze, and he was, like, getting motion sickness <laughs> wow that child getting motion sickness mm. and then it turns out like i don't care i'm spoiling this shit alice was a clone the entire time oh my god and the original alice was actually like the ceo of umbrella 
<laughs> oh my fuck. I, I, I'm done. And, and you know what happens at the end? She decides what? she downloads all her memories and gives it to the clone Alice so she can like bl- carry on and live a regular life in the apocalypse. It's so bad. Uh, so. But yeah, that was the Resident and... Evil movies. <laughs> What's next? But I will say this: the CGI ones were not bad. They, they, yeah, they were pretty good. I actually enjoyed some of them. I didn't find them to be scary. That that was like the first Resident Evil movie I was scared of. I'm a scaredy baby. No, I get scared. None of them are really like starting with the third one. They're just straight up action movies. Yeah. And then the CGI ones. Uh, I think the first one was trying to be a little scary. It was the one with Leon and Claire, and then the mm-hmm. second one just had Leon in it, but it was like really action focused. And then the the third one, Vendetta. It's basically John Wick with Leon and Chris. It was a love story, a tale as old as time. It's beautiful. Have you seen that one? I watched a good chunk of it. I just don't remember because they all just blend together. I mean, what more can you tell me? Umbrella is evil. They make <laughs> zombies. The Resident Evil team, Chris, Leon, Claire, um, Sherry, Bob, Terry, uh, Sam. I'm making up names now. They all just try to stop it because a fat cat CEO. Oh, it sounds like now. It's so funny. These guys are, t- they're literally fighting like John Wick, like with the kung fu. And they're in New York City and they're blowing up the FDR drive. <laughs> it's so, they're killing innocent people. Oh, Ew, my God. dude, it's the best. I have that one too. <laughs> what, what, what's funny is that uh, one of my friends was jokingly shipping and Chris, like, Leon is, is 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 the boyfriend who's just drunk, and Chris is just trying to get him back, you know, get him back in fighting shape. But he was never out of shape. Okay. Duh, duh, duh. Yeah, those two are. Really... That's funny. I'm a, I'll peek at those two. What's the next set? What's the next genre of movies? Let's move from Resident Evil. Okay, well we got a bunch of schlock that no one. I right, just do quick. Don't describe them. Let's just shoot them out. There's House of the Dead. Okay. Alone in the Dark. Okay. Which, that one has a 1% on Rotten Tomatoes. I didn't even know it had a movie. <laughs> well, a lot of these movies were made by the same person. His name is Uwe Boll. Oh, no. Nostalgia Critic was talking about it. It must be bad. Yeah, he did. I'm pretty sure he did the first House of the Dead and Alone in the Dark, Blood Rain. Oh gosh, wasn't Blood Rain like notoriously bad? I think so. I think I saw it. I don't remember. I know they had a bunch I'm... of straight to DVD movies. I just remember seeing preview. Oh, it's a 2005 movie. No wonder. It's just it's just not going to be good. Now, I'm going to say now if Blood Rain was made today, it would probably be a little better. Who knows? Oh yeah, totally. totally. Yeah, um, and then yeah. oh, nostalgia critic reviewed it. Hit the deck. All right, next, next movie. Nice. Let's go. It's Far Cry. I didn't see that. Uh, oh my God, Edward! I'm sorry. There's three Blood Rain movies. One came out last year. I told you. Yeah, they they had a bunch of straight to DVD movies. Oh, now I'm curious. Uh, All right, next. I'm sorry. Uh, you do, I didn't mean to read. We got the Final Fantasy movie. Spirits Within. Oh, yeah. And everyone was disappointed because they were like, what does this have to do with Final Fantasy? CGI was good at the time. It was. I actually liked it as a sci-fi film. Not a... <laughs> a sci-fi film. Sci-fi. It was like a Dune film. All right, anyway, go ahead. Next uh, one. You got Doom with your favorite, The Rock. Oh, uh... I never seen it, it were... but I I know that it has like a section where it's like a first person shooter, and I guess it's, mm-hmm. I'm assuming that was the highlight of the movie. By the way, folks, I take back the Blun Raid comment. It is not good. <laughs> the third movie. 
<laughs> I just I'm just scrolling through. They they put somebody put the whole movie online and she's fighting Nazis. So I mean, that's a plus. All right, keep going. Yeah. I keep interrupting you. But, I'm sorry. But you know what all these movies have in common is they're all bad. Like none of them are good. None of them have has had uh, over 40% on Rotten Tomatoes, it's really except Mortal Kombat so far. Uh, there's a uh, Silent Hill, mm-hmm. which I, I actually heard from other people that it was a decent movie. I never played the Silent Hill. The first Silent Hill movie was good, the second one was not. Uh, Dead or Alive. Oh my god, I love that movie! <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Okay, I've only it. I've only seen it once, but I remember it because it's actually it's a really good fighting game movie because they're at a tournament and if they have like a watch uh-huh. and if it goes off, it's time to fight. Like you could be taking a shit if that watch goes off, you have to fight. <laughs> and I remember like yeah. something like that happens, like somebody's like chilling in their room or working out. And their their alarm goes off, and then someone just like crashes through the door, and they have to start fighting. I only seen it once. We have to watch it again. We do. We, we have, have to do it during bad movie night. Yeah. We've been having bad movie nights since quarantine, and it's been good for us. Like as like friends, like a group of us get together uh, on you know on Discord and we watch. Yeah, we have to watch that one. I need to refresh my memory. And then there's a bunch of boring ones. There's Hitman. In the name of the king, I don't even know what movie that is. what game that is. Let me let me look it up. In the name of the king. Uh, name of the king video game. It's not a. It's on the list. Oh. Uh, in the name of the king. Who cares? Anyway. <laughs> All right, go. Oh, dang. All right. <laughs> Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li. Oh my gosh, the movie that didn't have Chun Li in most of the film. <laughs> the one where she awkwardly does that twirling bird kick. And then her pendant twirls too. Don't forget that. Right. <laughs> remember the guy from American Pie was in it? No. Like, I just remember David Seville from Alvin and the Chipmunks. That's not him. <laughs> that's not <Yeah>. him. <laughs> <laughs> they look the same to me. I'm sorry. They do. They do. Yeah. Who the hell acts for Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li though? Who's climbing okay. for it? If it were a TV show where it was just Chun Li as a cop, yeah. But then they were like, they didn't know what to do with her. That's the problem with the movie. They just didn't know, and they focused on the cop the most. And I, I just. If if somebody if somebody listens to all of our podcasts and responds to this, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me that the movie was about the cop and not so much about Chun Li. I recall twenty minutes of Chun Li, like movie time. The only part I remember is that taboo of the Black Eyed Peas plays Vega. <laughs> Oh, I blocked that out of my mind. I think you're right. And then uh, we have the live-action Tekken movie that nobody saw. <laughs> Except me. Eh. Versus the anime Tekken movie, which was decent. And then the CGI one, which was terrible. And the... which w- Were there two live-action Tekken movies? Yes, there was. The second one is a prequel. It's focusing on Kazuya, and it's boring. Holy shit. Doesn't he, like, get the shits or something? It's so boring. And there's a bunch of scenes of him just walking in slow motion with this stupid music playing. They had, dude, they had to stretch this out to, like, 90 minutes somehow, and that's how they did it. It was so boring. So terrible. That's probably, like, the worst I've seen. At least the other ones are entertaining. The first Tekken movie, the first live action one, had potential because they mm-hmm. had a good they had good actors playing. Like there was a, the actor who played Eddie Gordo really knew mm-hmm. Capoeira, mm-hmm. and um, they had Nina and Anna in there. Like the the people who played the roles, they looked like the characters, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. But they had like none of the relationships right. Like they tried to play put Christy as a love interest for Jin, <laughs> mm-hmm. when it should be Xiao Yu instead. 
and Christy is supposed to be like Eddie's like cousin and they never talk. And Nina and Anna are working together when they hate each other in the games. You know, stuff like that, because I'm a, I'm a nerd, so I, I know this shit. <laughs> oh. But yeah, they have, like, weird inclusions. Like, they have uh, Miguel from Second Six, but not Paul Phoenix. Like, mm-hmm. like why? <laughs> Dude, I just, I just, my brain. All right, next movies. Right, like now we're like in the 2010s, and I think this is when they tried to make video game movies a little mm-hmm. more seriously, try to treat them with a little more respect. So we have the Prince of Persia movie. <laughs> oh, the... you mean Aladdin? <laughs> <laughs> Prince of Persia in the sands of don't waste your time. Dang, you went in. <laughs> I saw this movie one time, and I don't remember much. I, I He uses the Dagger of Time to rewind, like, three times. And that's mm-hmm. it. Like, And the whole plot of the game is the sands of time, they go off, and everybody's, like, mummies, like, sand mummies. And he's fighting these monsters, and he's trying to prevent, like, rewind it from happening. The movie, he's trying to prevent that from happening, so you never get to see the cool sand monsters or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why do the Prince of Persia movie if you're not going to do follow the thing? And that's a problem with a lot was, of these movies. And it was produced by Disney. Yeah, that's right. That, that's the problem with a lot of these movies. You're trying to cram like a 10, 15 hour game into a two hour narrative and it just doesn't work. Uh-huh. That's why, you know, you have The Witcher, which is a TV show, not a movie. Uh, you cut out. I, I think the spirits don't want you to talk about Witcher. Oh. Well, I'll get back to that later. Okay, uh, go ahead. Yeah, and I'm just to wrap it up, man. Like, we got the Need for Speed movie. I saw it. Don't remember it. I saw Warcraft. Don't remember that one either. Assassin's Creed. Didn't watch it. Oh, I watched it. It was... <laughs> it... Uh... Eh. Eh. Yeah. Not, I felt it was okay, but it followed the game pretty well, but not completely. You had the Tomb Raider reboot, which you didn't like. I hated it. <laughs> oh. I didn't like it. Humbug, I didn't like it. <laughs> I, okay, I saw it, and I thought it was okay. Like, it didn't offend if me. If I wanted to watch Legends of Hidden <laughs> the Hidden Temple... I would have watched the Nickelodeon one. Oh, I did. Well, well, well why didn't you like it? Uh, okay, because I, you, you are the one. It is your fault. You're the one who got me into Tomb Raider again. Like, you made me fall in love with her from the 2013 version. And, like, I didn't like it because it just didn't feel... Let's let's take Tomb Raider away and just say Adventure Girl. <laughs> Tall girl. Like it didn't feel like a Tomb Raider film, and I, I guess it's it, it sounds vague of me to say that, but I just did not. I didn't enjoy the actress. Also, the action scenes were like, come on, they didn't really. They were trying to go for the 2013 plot, and they kind of just they skimmed over it. Yeah, they did, and they got rid of Sam Nishimura and the um, the other supporting characters from the original game, which I feel if they brought all the characters from the game in, it would have been more of an interesting plot, but instead it was just her, and then she falls in love with some, like, did she fall in love with the dude? Well, she pals around with this dude for a while that she just meets, and I- I've never... Uh, heard of this character before i know he, someone said nishimura i don't know i just not <laughs> I, just, I, I i sorry uh, you know i rant Ugh. Uh, oh. now what i was yeah it's what i was saying before starting with like the ps3 360 generation video games started to become a lot more cinematic in their storytelling oh yeah, yeah. so tomb raider reboot 
it was a great game and it had a great story. Like I remember playing it and I hadn't, you know, I wasn't like really a gamer, like as much as I used to be. And, but I caught, I got swept up in that game cause it had a, such a rich narrative. It had characters I cared about, it had good gameplay. And it was, it was just a great experience overall. You're, it's impossible to get that same experience from a, the movie cause it's, mm-hmm. you're not interacting with it and it's only two hours. Mm-hmm. So to make a movie based on this game, which is already like a movie, is pointless. It's it's only yeah. going to be neutered, and yeah, and they're making an Uncharted movie. And guess what? The same thing's going to happen with that Uncharted movie. It's not going to be it's as gonna good. Be, it's going to be a romance film. Just I just yeah. Tom Holland's too too young for romance. But yeah, like, but that being said, I still enjoyed the Tomb Raider mo- remake reboot whatever we want to call it for what it was like i thought the actress was okay you know i thought the the action was all right um she she had a little bike race that was cool and i was gonna say i don't know i had fun i saw it in 40x so i got i got rained on (laughs) (laughs) yeah but Supposedly, they're going to make a sequel to it. Will it be better? Who knows? I think their best bet, if they do make a sequel, is to just do an original story. Yeah, I think you're right. I also heard that that actress who plays Laura Croft was doing a lot of drugs. I don't know if that's true or not, and I don't want to make assumptions. Oh my god. Do you remember the the poster with her long-ass neck? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she looking like a giraffe. Yo, tall girl. <laughs> but the, they need to stop making s- stories about her dad. I'm tired of hearing about her dad. Like, uh, oh yeah, that's okay. Okay, stop because you're right. Because first of all, daddy issues. Second of all, who cares? Your dad, get over him. Just come on, people, write something different. Like. Do do it like in memory of my dad. You know she didn't have. To, I don't know. I just whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm done. Uh, next movie. <laughs> Daddy. Next one is Rampage, which we saw like yesterday. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were watching Rampage, and it was just. It was all right. It was. It was basically as much as mileage as you can get with that setup for for a Rampage movie. Mm-hmm. And even then, they couldn't like get it right because they made the lizard into a crocodile. Oh, a crocodile, it's like, porcupine, why? warthog. Give us the lizard, you cowards! Yeah, I know, right? But uh, while I was watching Rampage, though, the rock is just trying to interact with like the, the gorilla, and it's just I just don't buy it. Like, and and then he's fighting all these giant monsters and. He just looks mildly annoyed, like someone cut in line in front of him, like at Starbucks. Like he doesn't look like he's in danger at all. <laughs> Dude gets shot and he's all like, "Yeah, he shrugs it work. off." He's like, "Oh, it didn't hit no major organs. I'm good." He literally uh, shrugs I, that shit off. <laughs> I really thought he was gonna say like, "Oh no, I wore something under my, you know, my white tee." In my white yeah, because that's the only uniform I ever wear in every freaking movie. <laughs> no, he has to wear black in the Fast and the Furious because Vin Diesel wears white. Oh, that's right. A different color variant. But yeah, and then um, I, I honestly, I was just playing video games until they got to the city part. <laughs> I, was just like, I was cleaning my room, to be fair. <laughs> I was, you know... <laughs> <laughs> and then I was telling you that to Shelby Club. We were just <laughs> keeping you from the company. <laughs> we, we didn't watch the movie. <laughs> we, we both lied and said, yeah, what a great movie. <laughs> Yo, I thought you were really watching the movie. <laughs> I mean, I had it on in front of me, but I was like, I would look every now and then and, be, and comment just to, like not blow my cover. I'd <laughs> be like, oh man, The Rock got big arms, man. <laughs> you did you're like oh man he's like a big old steak of meat i don't know <laughs> i think the only one that was focused on the movie was Kristen. <laughs> oh my god Chris- <laughs> Kristen, you got duped <laughs> you got punked where's he two hours 
Yeah, Ram- Ram- I mean, if you're going to watch Rampage, just fast forward to, like, the last half hour. Yeah, like, it's your typical uh, <laughs> evil people making um, chemicals that make animals big, and now we got to kill them. And everybody dies. Da- so, it's, dr- it's, it's like a Godzilla movie, I guess. Kaika, Kaika. Yeah, and... I didn't, I didn't hate the film. It's a nice one to put on in the background. I'm putting it in the Mario pile. <laughs> it's a middle-of-the-road film, and you know why? Because it has a 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> wow. I heard a lot of my friends uh, liking it, though. Uh, you know? I mean... Uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> what the hell's Dead Trigger? I don't know what that is. But all right. Is that the last one? Well, there's Ratchet and Clank. Boring. And the Angry Birds movie. I actually liked Angry Birds. You're canceled. <laughs> How dare you? You're canceled. So up until this point, there's literally has been no movies that were certified fresh in the video game movie department until... Last year, Detective Pikachu with 69%. I love Detective Pikachu. That's that's like my comfort film now. It's To me, it's up there with Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but I think we talked about that in a previous podcast. Check below. Yes. Link in the description or not, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Detective Pikachu, it made the most... Uh, yeah, I made, uh, actually, no, Warcraft made a little bit more, but it still made, the Detective, Detective Pikachu made $433 million. That's impressive. Yeah. And as soon as that movie, um, what was it? Soon as, like, what, what was it? Like, the second weekend, they were like, all right, we're making a sequel. And I was like, what? Yeah, like, and we shared our thoughts on the movie. I thought it was all right. You love it. Yeah, but I mean, I'm kind of predictable at this point. It's it's and it's fine. And then, uh, of course, a few months ago, we got Sonic the Hedgehog, which also got a, a good score, sixty four percent, and it made three hundred and six million worldwide. I'm sure it would have made more if this pandemic never happened. Yeah. And that's and good. I like the Sonic movie too, but it is another road trip buddy cop guy. With his rodent sidekick, yeah. Adventure. So, so that brings me back to like my first question, like with Super Mario Brothers. It's like, is Sonic the Hedgehog the movie a good adaptation of Sonic the Hedgehog the game? If I had to look at it that way, I'd be like, no, because <laughs> when when the fuck does Sonic ride around in a minivan in the games? <laughs> yeah, it's true. But well, guess what? Okay, go ahead. But as a standalone film, if you just if he just enjoyed it on its own merits, yeah, I like Sonic the Hedgehog. I enjoyed it the second, t- well, m- the second time too. There was supposed to be, because we're talking about Super Mario. <clears throat> there's supposed to be an animated CGI Super Mario movie, and Sony had had the rights to it, and then DreamWorks had the rights to it. So it looks like we may be getting a movie in 2022, but at this point, it's been tossed back and forth. We don't know what's going to happen. Well, I, that's what I said about earlier. Uh, it's made. Oh. It's being made by Illumination. Illumination. You're right. Okay. My bad. I'm sorry. All right. So oh, we dear. got we got Sonic, Detective Pikachu, and then uh, we got the Mortal Kombat animated movie. Which I liked. That was alright. I mean, story-wise, it's not going to win any awards, but as a Mortal Kombat adaptation? Yeah, it did a good job. I, I, okay, that, I 100% agree. And, uh, I'm glad at least they got the source material. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so what we need now, we need a movie that hits, like, both points. A movie that's good on its own and a movie that's a good adaptation of the source material. So, what we got coming up, we got a Monster Hunter movie. 
Oh, yeah, and guess who's going to be in it? Oh, Mila Jovovich. <laughs> hey. Yeah. A.K. Alice. Best character in Resident Evil. Uh, there's going to be an, a Mortal Kombat reboot next year. Hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully it doesn't get delayed. That one's going to be rated R. So they're mm-hmm. learning. Hopefully that's going to be good. They need to get some good fights for that. The Tomb Raider sequel. There's Uncharted, which I think Uncharted's going to suck. <laughs> uh, I'm going to agree with you. And, and then there's a Minecraft movie supposedly coming out. Oh. Just like, why? Uh, and there's a few more but those are like those are movies that have been talked about for years I'm gonna tell you here and now is the okay this will determine if it's gonna be good is it a live action film for Minecraft I don't know it just has uh, 20 you cut out for a second what would you say I said I don't know you said you don't know. Okay, so my thought is, if it's live action, it's gonna suck. If it's 3D CGI, even if it sucks, so many kids are gonna buy it. True. What do you What do you think? Um, I don't know shit about Minecraft. I'm the wrong person to talk to. But I uh, am too. I just know that my friends' kids, they like to play it. But you actually, do you know what's the hot, the the video game movie with the highest percentage on Rotten Tomatoes? I can't believe this shit. What's the highest percentage for a movie? For a video game movie. A oh, video game movie. Maybe seventy six percent. No, it's seventy three percent. It's the Angry Birds movie too. This is it's honestly not a bad movie franchise. <laughs> A movie based on a freaking cell phone game. <laughs> hey, it says true to the source material. That's the that's the other stupid part. Like, <laughs> it doesn't try hard to be what it's not. It is what it is. Just birds breaking shit. Okay. Wow. So, would you say, based on the recent like good video game movies, you think the curse has been lifted? That the curse is over? People were saying the curse was lifting when Warcraft and Angry Birds came out. Like, those two movies. Because they didn't think that they were that bad. But I personally think Detective Pikachu and Sonic really took off. If they didn't make the move to change Sonic, then I would have been like... It would have been a different movie, in my opinion. What do you think? It would have bombed. Yeah. Or not maybe maybe not bombed, but it definitely wouldn't have been as successful. It oh just, yeah. It just looked hideous. But I think things are turning around, like again, The Witcher. Instead of making a movie, they made a Netflix series and people seem to like that. Mm-hmm. And uh I think there's like more stuff like that coming out out down the line. The Castlevania show on Netflix is doing well. Oh yeah, people love it. I was told to watch it, but I'm like, you know, I'm watching She-Ra. So, I'm, 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 yeah. I love that show. Yeah, so it's not impossible to adapt these games. It just depends on the format, you know? Oh, yeah. And I think a lot of them would benefit from a, a, t- a TV show format where you have, like, a whole season. I agree. Story. Yeah. So um, hopefully, actually, what? there are... Sh- um, I, I would like to make a recommendation... I know. If you, since we all like video game and video game movies, the parody show that pretty much covers a, a huge genre of video games is Glitch Tex, made by Nickelodeon. And Glitch Tex basically follows uh, the two main protagonists, a guy and a girl, and they basically work for GameStop and they stop their. It's like a GameStop Nintendo hybrid, and they stop the video games from glitching. Because once they glitch, they gotta catch them like Ghostbusters. But the catch is they get stuck in the game that's glitchy, and they have to beat it in order to capture them. And then they get points and XP. And I was like, dude, that's amazing! And they have like a Castlevania. 
They had a Final Fantasy episode. They had a cell phone game episode. They had your your standard everything that we talked about. They had except for the zombie episode. They didn't have that yet. But yeah, check out Glitch Text. I mean, it's a TV show. I feel like TV shows are better than their movie adaptation. What do you think? Is that a new show? Yeah, Glitch Text came out on Netflix. It it was supposed to show on Nick, but Nickelodeon was like, no. <laughs> Nickelodeon does that. It worked for them once. Why? I'm sorry, man. I'm eating a papadilla. Hashtag. Papadilla? Hashtag. It's all right. Yeah, I think TV shows is a good uh, it's a good format. They need to bring back Nick Arcade. It would be so cool now. I th- I think Nick Arcade would be like a different um, like it would be a game changer. Yeah, so hopefully the curse is lifted and uh, these upcoming video game movies will be diggity diggity dope. Wait, what? What? Upcoming what? His upcoming movies will be dope. Yeah. yeah. I hope so, too. As for video um, games based on movies, there's still no hope for them. Yeah. Well, we'll get there one day. I feel like we're... I, I, I think we're headed in the right direction because more and more older people who just don't want to get the concept are going away, retiring, or just dying. <laughs> They're just dying fucking killing themselves i mean do you want do you okay i'm gonna ask the audience do you want your mother or your father let's just say they have a lot of money make the a video game movie from your favorite video game (laughs) i think what you're trying to say is the fans are working on these projects the fans that grew up with these properties Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And when, That's what I'm saying. And when fans create new contents for popular IPs, you know it goes well. Look at Star Wars. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're like, eh. <sighs> All right. Uh, anything else you want to contribute? I think that wraps it up for today. All right, guys, don't get mad at me if I call your movie bad. It's okay to like these movies, but just know that opinions can be wrong. <laughs> wow. Well, not just that, but who cares? If you like that Super Mario movie, even though it's really not that great, that's fine. We're not taking it away from you, and we're not changing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sorry they didn't get a sequel. And and we're sorry a Snyder cut of it didn't get released. So Oh I mean, we... god, I just had indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about that real quick before we go. Okay, okay. So Justice League comes out and it's pretty mediocre. But it's People are complaining because, you know, the director didn't get to finish it because he had to step away from the project due to a tragedy in his family. But people are so convinced that if he finished the movie, it would be a way better film. Like, it would probably be, like, a little more serious, a little more dark. But we would probably get pretty much the same shit we got already. And so they've been... I... Yeah. Agreed with you yesterday. I think it was you who was saying that. It was like, why do you want to get more of the same? Yeah, it's like, why do you want an extra long bad movie when you already have one already? It's funny because Harley Quinn was making fun of that. It's this nerd who was just... That that, that that TV show just goes in on itself and all of DC. And it was... This is dude on the couch with his friend talking about like how Harley Quinn uses her Mary Sue powers. And he's wearing a t-shirt that says, release the Snyder Cut. <laughs> And, it's and then like, he was writing a review about Harley Quinn when he never saw the show. And I'm like, oh, this is just too real. And I had to tell people, like, mm-hmm. I had a friend like that. There are people that are not on the internet who actually go to you face to face and try to prove their point in that way. 
when they don't watch the property. So, and even if they do watch the property, they're going in with a, I'm not going to like it. So, of course, you're not going to like it because you told yourself you're not going to like it and you're not going to change your mind. So, who cares? Yeah. So, people have been clamoring for this Snyder Cut for years and it's finally happening. <clears throat> it's kind of like a Sonic the Hedgehog effect where the fans are so vocal that they finally get what they want. Is this a bad thing or a good thing? Well, when you watch the Snyder Cut, come back to me. <laughs> oh, okay. So a year from now, we're going to review the Snyder Cut. All right. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right, y'all. Uh, <clears throat> Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I hope you guys have a great Memorial Day weekend. That you're social distancing. And if you're going to the beaches, you're right. staying out of the water and you're being safe. And, you know, yeah. Yeah, stay safe, stay inside. We love you. Thanks for listening. Yeah, we're going to do that Power Rangers fan fiction soon. I haven't forgot about you guys, all all three of you. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Take care, y'all. Bye.